Scott, in、uh, trying to discern the difference between sentience and non-sentience, if we can divide the world, I'd like to ask the question: You know, what things are conscious?、Uh, there's controversy. Can a non-biological entity be conscious? Is it can animals? Can is consciousness everywhere?、Uh, from your perspective, particularly in your work in quantum information theory, can 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 you help us discern that? People have have puzzled over you know、uh, questions of what is and isn't conscious for a long time.、Uh, uh, you know, is a dog conscious? It is. Okay. How about a frog? Okay. How about an ant? You know, how about a bacterium and so forth? Or is a fetus conscious? Okay. Of course, the most famous such question is you know, could a computer be、right. conscious? Could a machine be conscious? And and there are many people say I think the answer is no. You know, machine wouldn't really f- have emotions. It wouldn't really be creative. Or you know, there's always it, the the thing that it c- could never be differs from person to person. But、uh, you know, I think that people's intuitions about that can be easily manipulated because when people say a machine can never Really, be conscious, right? They're, they're, what they really have in mind, you know, a robot that talks、mm-hmm. like this and、mm-hmm. really looks like a robot.、Mm-hmm. Okay, but now you know. Imagine that, like your your best friend or you know your spouse for fifty years, right? You suddenly found out that all along that they just had a microchip in their skull、mm-hmm. that was, you know. Doing all the the same things that a brain would do, but electronically, right? Would you then say that your spouse had never been a person? Okay, so you can you know you can cook up much harder examples、mm-hmm. like that. Okay, and then you know you can even have more fun. You can say, okay, suppose that you do believe that a, a an appropriately programmed computer could be conscious, right? You believe that you know if、uh, something behaved indistinguishably from a human, then yeah, you know, we would have to regard it as such. Right, which this was Alan Turing's view when、mm-hmm. he put forward the Turing test. Right, and it's basically like a plea for fairness. Right, we wouldn't say that you know、uh, if someone acts intelligently, then you know just because they're black or because they're a woman or something that you know that that there's nothing it's really like to be them. Right, that would be hideous. Right, and we've learned as a species not to do that. So why should we do that to a computer program? <laughs> right, you know that that that's sort of the argument.、Uh, but now you know you can. You can have fun with this. You can say, okay, well, computer programs can be run in many different ways. Suppose that we uh,、um, simulated a computer program, but using pencil and paper. Okay, we just simulated all the complete dynamics of someone's brain. You know, using a huge amount of scratch、mm-hmm. paper. Okay, would our paper and pencil, you know, then bring into existence、mm-hmm. a consciousness?、Mm-hmm. Right? Does it have to happen at some speed to be、mm-hmm. conscious? Okay.、Uh, suppose that our computer program, you know, just runs. We're three times in parallel, just for error correction purposes. You know, just if there's a faulty processor, does it bring three different consciousnesses <laughs> into existence? Suppose we run the computer program backwards. What does that feel like? Does it feel like you're experiencing time backwards?、Yeah. Uh, you know, suppose that、uh, we run the the program in a heavily encrypted form. So that you know, unless you have some decryption key, which is you know on another galaxy, <laughs> then you know no one would ever have any idea what、yeah. what this thing does. Except, but with the decryption key, they can see that it's identical to your brain.、Yeah. Does that bring a consciousness into <laughs> existence? Okay, and we can keep multiplying examples like that.、Uh, these days, a lot of people talk about the Boltzmann brain problem, right?、Uh, you know, what if、uh, just You know, in an infinite universe, there's some random fluctuation of、uh, of the radiation、yeah. in, in interstellar space that produces, for a split second, you know, a being that's、uh, physically identical to you. Does that then experience a brief moment of consciousness before it, you know, it dies? Okay.、Uh, if you believe that it will be possible to simulate us in the far future, right? Then, then.、Uh, You know, there there could be huge numbers of simulations of you running in the future. How do you know that you're not one of those simulations?、Right? So what's the you know, implication of okay, all this? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so so you can keep multiplying these examples, and 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 you can confuse yourself more and more about it. Now, suppose you wanted to say that no, I don't think these strange things would be conscious, right? Then the burden falls on you to invent some criterion. You know, by、right. which you could say that you know that we are conscious and these weird other things are not, right? right? Even if my you know whole life history you know appears somewhere in the decimal digits of pi, that doesn't mean that pi is conscious yeah, yeah. or whatever, right? And so you know the best criterion that I've been able to to come up with is to say that consciousness. You know, really should have something to do with irreversibility. It should have something to do with sort of taking tiny、uh, fluctuations, you know, which 
come ultimately from the initial state of the universe, from the Big Bang, uh, if you trace them back far enough, and then amplifying them so that they have macroscopic effects. Right? One thing physics has taught us is that all irreversibility you know, ultimately arises from the specialness, the very low entropy of the initial state of the universe. Mm -hmm. And so you might believe, for example, that a Boltzmann brain you know, that fluctuates into existence out of the vacuum just wouldn't be conscious because it doesn't have the same sort of causal relation to the initial state of the universe that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, or, or like, you know, uh, and, and a machine could be conscious, but only if it were appropriately sensitive to these, you know, sort of small fluctuations. And those, its sensitivity to fluctuations would also make it impossible to copy its consciousness from one place to mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. You know, you could only create another thing that was like it, but not exactly the same thing. Now, why should having this causal connection to the initial state of the universe be important for consciousness? I have no idea why. Uh, all I can say is that it seems to give the right answer in a bunch of, you know, uh, it seems to give the intuitively uh, uh, plausible answer in, you know, all the cases that I can come up with.